and welcome to Build with me, Simon Atkins. As always, we are live from London. Now, today we're joined by the cast of Fighting With My Family. Would you please put your hands together for Nick Frost, Florence Pugh and Jack Loudon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Welcome to Build. Hello. A very excited audience here to, um, to listen to you guys today. So before we get started, if you guys at home want to get involved, you absolutely can. All you need to do is tweet us at Build Series LDN or leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. Guys, welcome to Build. Thanks. Oh, Thank you for having yeah. us. Mm. It's hot in here, isn't it? Yeah. That's why we've pulled down the blinds, especially for you guys. Well, and the heat. Um, so tell I would have us worn about. A thinner cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known. So the movie is out, Fighting with My Family, tomorrow. Yes. Tell us, for those who haven't seen it, and well, obviously they haven't seen it because it's not out yet, just tell us a little bit of what it's about. Florence Pugh. No. Florence Pugh. You're uh, really good at Okay, well, look, it's essentially about a family of wrestlers from Norwich. Uh, here are some of them <laughs> here. Uh, called the Knight Family, and they run a. Uh, a thing called the WAW Wrestling kind of uh, con what's it called the confederation, mm. and they they wrestle as a family, and it's about their story and their daughter uh, Paige here, played by Florence, and their son Zach. They go up to train potentially to get into the WWE, and only one of them gets in, and the other one has their dream shattered. Here's a look at a clip. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, should we look at the clips? Yeah, so let's do it. Let's oh, do we've got, it. Let's so we got That's one. the only time that's ever worked. <laughs> Fighting with my family, ladies and gentlemen. I have to say, guys, this film is absolutely hilarious from start to finish. So you guys play brother and sister. Uh, mm. Tell us a little bit about your characters. Um, yeah, so I play the brother, Zach, um, who <laughs> we, we both go... Basically, they both went, like Nick says, to try out for the WWE. And... Um, in, in a certain way, he's considered, he's the older one, and he's considered he's going to go on and do it, and they've always believed in him. And then right out of nowhere, she gets it, and she gets in, and she goes on and becomes this massive superstar, um, Paige. And he is essentially left, left back um, at home and continues to run the WAW and has to deal with not um, achieving his dream, Florence. <laughs> and um, I play uh, Soraya. Her real name is Soraya, and her WWE name is Paige. Um, she, yeah, I, I think you just summed it up. But she, she went on and and had a pretty rough time um, when she went out to Florida uh, for NXT. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen the documentary, it's also called Fighting with My Family, and this is what it's based on. Um, and it just shows the ups and downs of su success, I suppose, and what you have to leave behind. And I think Stephen did a really good job in getting that on the page. Um, and it's, as you said, it's based on a true story. Um, does that put a lot of pressure on you guys to fulfill those characters? I, I, I don't know. I mean, speaking personally, I think you want to be true to who your character is, you know. Um, I think when you play real people and they're wrestlers, it could make the premiere quite difficult if they didn't like what you did. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, they're very passionate people and they're great for me. For me to play Ricky was amazing because he's, he's often he's, um, he's every emotion all at the same time. And it's, you know, he's a proper rounded human being and he realised that he'd do anything for his family. So it was a, a dream to, to play him, you know. Did you guys get to meet and hang out with the real life counterparts? No, I only met Paige a couple of weeks ago, actually. I met her two weeks before we went to Sundance. Um, at the time when we were about to start shooting, Paige was suffering from her neck injury in America and she couldn't fly. So we just had to settle with messaging constantly and uh, calling her whenever I could. Um, so I finally got to meet her after the job was done, which was pretty surreal. Was she happy with the outcome? Yeah, I think <laughs> so. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jack? Uh, I, I, I was the one that I actually got to meet um, who I was playing quite early on and I went up to Norwich and went to a show of the WAW uh, one night, drove all the way f from London and back in the same night and it was just amazing. It's such a it's such an incredible thing that I wasn't aware of in this country. Like We all know roughly sure. about the WWE but this sort of 
massive amateur semi-pro wrestling circuit that's all over the UK in like pubs in uh, church halls and in, in community halls like it's it's constantly on every single week and it's this ongoing um soap opera and, slash pantomime and people are so passionate about it aren't they oh my god it's they insane are. How, oh. how, how, how people love it so much they really really are and i mean the things that people shout at these guys is quite <laughs> extraordinary and florence got a bit of that in la Horrendous. So we'll talk about that in a second. We want to talk about um, the relationship dynamic between you and uh, Lena Headley, who you play opposite, in a very different role to what she's known for in Game of Thrones. Tell us about working with her. Um, I, I loved it. I, I'm, I, I'd never met Lena before. <clears throat> and then the first time I met her, it was uh, in the ring, and we stood and watched what the stuntmen were doing, and we had to have a go. And I just felt like I'd known her for for a long time. Right. You know, We share a sense of humour and... Um, she's really clever and smart, and it's fun hanging hanging around. It's no it's no hardship hanging around with Lena Headey. Let me tell you, there is there's definitely some hilarious moments in the movie between um, the two of you guys, and also Stephen Merchant directed it. So um, he plays a cameo in the in the movie, and there's a, a funny dinner scene that we're going to show you guys. But what is it like working with with Stephen? Uh, wonderful. He's 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 an incredibly talented bloke that's incredibly um, smart. Um, uh, he knows what he wants, which is quite um, a useful thing in a director. And also the fact that he is, he, you know, he's a he's quite a brilliant comic actor himself. So um, it was very easy to s understand Steve's direction very very quickly. Well, let's take a look at a clip um, that Stevens in where Zach introduces his girlfriend's family to his family for the first time. <laughs> There's so many funny moments like that. So what is it like when you're all on set together? Do you guys just break out in laughter loads? And is are you We had to come back to that scene because we cracked so many times in one day that we'd, we'd lost, we lost the time. <laughs> so we ended up having to pause and come back the following day when all of us have, were on best behaviour. It does get too much. It gets like you can't stop yourself. And it, <laughs> everyone gets it apart from the crew because they're really super professional. And then yeah. it gets a bit boring for them. <laughs> watching us a lot just laugh but you you can't get anything out just the, and then because we're allowed to improvise a little bit once right. you've got the stuff done and then what that does is it brings new things that you're not prepared for right because if you do the same dialogue you can kind of prepare for something that's coming and you'd look down or you'd act away so you wouldn't have to look <laughs> at the thing that made you laugh but then other people would do new things that you you're not ready for and it starts it all again and do a lot of those new things end up making the cut uh, some of them or did, did right? I mean, the, the, a lot of your stuff yeah. made the cut. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think it goes back to Stephen being really generous and securing himself as a right. filmmaker that he allows people to improvise and, and if it's good and funny, then it, it, it kind of stays in sometimes, isn't it? So is it weird then when he's kind of like directing one minute and then he's like in the scene with you guys? <laughs> that must be quite an odd thing, or, or is it? It was a little bit strange to yeah to be acting with him and looking at him and trying to look at him like and he's your just character. watching you yeah and you're just in your <laughs> head you're like but he's just watching me to make sure I'm saying his words uh -huh. in the right order or he likes it, it was very bizarre yeah it's a strange experience and of course it's executive produced by Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Um, what was it like working with him? And there's obviously the first time that we see him is when you guys meet him in um, in the WWE ring, or just off off stage. Um, was it was it surreal working with him? Was it what was it like working with him? Was he was he is he funny? Is he is, um, he, is he is he is he like The Rock? He is like The Rock. He is just that big. He's a little bit bigger than that, actually. Um, uh, he was well, so Jack and I filmed our second day with him at uh, the Staples Centre, which we are pretending is the Wembley, but it's not. Um, and he is a, a total machine. Like he will come. He came on and just kind of spoke about the promo that he was going to do, and then went away and learnt it over twenty minutes. Came back and just shouted at us for about an hour. <laughs> um, it was utterly amazing but yeah he's uh, he's a really really wonderful guy and he gives everyone the same amount of time um which was really wonderful to me because there were really a lot of a lot of mega scenes in that week in la um that he made sure i felt 100 percent with uh, so i was just gonna say does he give you did he give either of you any like genuine wrestling advice 
Yeah, when I so there's a final scene in the film where um, we we actually recreate the famous pay JJ Lee match, and we went out uh, to the end of a Monday Night Raw, and Dwayne went out to kind of stop the crowd from leaving and said, "Hey, would you mind staying and being the audience?" So of course everyone stayed, um, and before that we had to make sure that all the fight was correct because we only had an hour to shoot it. Um, and I remember standing in, in the ring and he was making sure that I was going to throw my punch right so that the camera over there could catch it. And he was like demonstrating to me and I remember just like, <laughs> looking at him and then looking at the Staples Center and then looking at him and, and having a m major pinch me moment of Dwayne uh, teaching me how to wrestle. So that's definitely ticked off my bucket list. Um, and what about the, the preparation and the training for both of you? Because, you know, um, after watching the movie, there's some seriously risky looking moves in there. We, uh, Fl Florence and I got, um, we had to do a lot of physical work in to get us, like I had to get a lot bigger and things like that. Um, and But in terms of the wrestling, that kind of began with a, an ex-wrestler known as Robbie Brookside. That was his wrestling name. Um, I don't actually know his real last name. It but is. That is his real last name. So. Well, uh, <laughs> And he is a scouser. And he um, basically battered me and Florence around in a freezing cold... It looked like a garage lockup with a ring in it. And Florence and I were just spent hours just falling back and forth o onto the canvas and right. getting used to slamming your back and losing all the wind out of your body. And um, he, he was pretty magnificent, that guy, and in a very old school kind of way. Kind of steady, kind of slow nod, kind of, <laughs> you're ready. Kid. You're all right, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, was, yeah he was wonderful, that guy. Um, and just um, on, on that point, your character deals with a lot of rejection. Um, how do you think he, you know, how do you think he, he dealt with that? I think... Um, I, I think in, you see in the film, and Zach himself's always been quite upfront and honest about this, that he didn't deal with it brilliantly. Mm. Um, you know, I think it's very difficult to deal with it well. Um, but he ultimately managed to completely reinvent himself and take a completely different avenue and became something mammoth in his own community where he um, is the guy that is currently teaching um, kids with autism, with Down syndrome. He, he taught a blind kid how to wrestle. Like he's done, in my opinion, uh, far more extraordinary things than... Um, just becoming a sort of huge superstar wrestler. Some th things that I think take a hell of a lot more patience and effort. He's, he's quite remarkable, but he's always been quite upfront about, yeah, it was tough. What's that line in the film that you say, just because millions of people... Aren't watching. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's, that's what, kind of a good, good line for the film. And what about, like, so the training that you had to do, Paige? Does have, like, how many hours of training did you have to do? How physically challenging is it on your body? Um, well, Jack and I, pretty much straight away when we got the jobs, Stephen uh, said to us that he really wanted us to do as much wrestling as possible. And um, it's that's so wonderful to hear because you don't really get to get involved, especially on sets where everyone's really terrified that you're going to hurt yourself. Um, so we did and we got training and we, we got heavily involved with CrossFit pretty much straight away. Um, and we went over to NXT in Florida to go and kind of train with these athletes and, and see the lifestyle and understand them. And God, they work so hard. Um, and yeah, basically just started racking up all the bruises and uh, counting them and seeing how many we each got. She, each week. she can take a hit. I can. Uh, yeah, yeah. He just hit me outside in the stomach. We're That's still wrestling now. That's a lie. It's not. It really is. It isn't a lie. <laughs> right, we've got loads of questions coming in on social. Um, Elle on Twitter wants to know, Jack, uh, what was your first thought when they told you that you were going to wear Santa booty shorts? Uh, uh, th this was it. This was, I'd made it. And um, <laughs> I no longer needed to push myself. And... Um, hoping that that was going to do a large part of the work for me in the scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, you guys shot both in the States and in the UK. Did you, did you guys get to... Did we, you, you shot mainly in the UK? Uh, yeah, I was just in, in London. And I didn't even go to Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to, so where, got, where did you guys shoot the movie? Uh, where so was it? In London? What studio? Do, do we use a studio? Uh, we did towards the last couple London. of days. We shot in London and Norwich in the the, the covered market scene, and then um, Jack and I went over to LA and we shot stuff in LA, um, and that's where we shot all of the rock stuff, um, and that was it. Great Yarmouth. 
Great Yarmouth. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we went to the seaside. <laughs> for the day. Had some donuts. Oh came and back. <laughs> <laughs> and that final scene that you guys, uh, that final fight scene. Yeah. What is it like? What was it like filming that in front of like that huge crowd? Is that an extremely daunting experience? I mean, it's totally mental. It's not something that I ever thought I'd be doing, <laughs> age twenty-one. Um, but no, it's uh, it's really so. When we were training, um, obviously, it's a world that if you grow up with it, or you watch it, or you want to be like them, you go into. But I'd never quite understood. Like it was very fun, and we were in the ring play fighting essentially for like a month, uh, which was great. But I never quite understood why, because these guys they get they get really badly hurt. And by the age of thirty, I mean Paige's story is she's retired now because she's hurt her neck mm. and she can't wrestle. And it's like it would be deadly if she did. Um, so these guys get really battered up and uh, and they go back week after week to get back in the ring. And I didn't quite understand why they kept on doing it. And then when I did that match... You realised? Everybody screams at you for everything you do. And for eight minutes, you are a superhero. Whether you are a baby face, which is a goodie, or a, or a right. heel, which is a baddie. Anything you do, people appreciate and, and love you for. Um, and I, I totally understood. It was the most exhilarating thing. I probably weed Addictive, myself about four times. <laughs> yeah. um, Nick, you guys had the chance to work with uh, Vince Vaughn as well. What was that like? Uh Good. I didn't meet Vince on set. We did a film a couple of years ago and we hung around together for like a month. So he is a, <clears throat> he's an amazing guy, actually. He's, I think he's fantastic in the film. He's, he, I think he puts in a really, really big, good shift. Um, he's very clever. He's very quick. Um, and he's a challenge to work with in the best possible way, I think, because he, he, he challenges you as an mm. actor to to be smart and, and to, uh, you know, he, he wants to bring you up with him. Um, and that moment as well, I thought there's, um, there's a lot of tear jerkers, I thought, that moment where you actually are fighting in the ring and you're watching at home. Is it quite, is it hard or is it easy to get into the emotion of that uh, moment knowing that it actually happened? Uh, it's just part of what we do yeah. as actors, I guess. It's just what, it's, that's, that is what we do, you know. The rest <laughs> is just dressing up, but the... Uh, summoning emotion, uh, seemingly at will, is is the skill that some of us have. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what else you guys got coming up for 2019? Is there anything that um, you can tell us, any exciting projects that you might be working on? Uh, I am writing a, um, a show. Um, so I'm writing eight episodes of a show um, about m myself uh, as some form of ghost hunter. Uh, a hilarious comedy will ensue, and some emotions. <laughs> and three out of the nine possible emotions. <laughs> and Jack, I believe you're moving into doing a bit of producing. Uh, I, I am, yeah. I, I um, Myself and another uh, produce, uh, a producer have set up a production company, um, which I just have always wanted to do. And, you know, I know it's something that people tend to wait till they're a bit older or a little bit bigger or whatever. Um, but I just thought, like, why not try it now? And I, I've always wanted to learn more about that side of it. And I have a few sort of ideas that have always been the kind of ideas that actors sit about and go, wouldn't it be cool if we did that with that with that person? So it must be. Is it, it's, it's quite a lengthy process, I presume, to try and get something, an idea to, like, to screens. But also quite an ex exciting prospect, I guess. Yes, it is. I think um, it's one of the major things I've learned in this sort of small time I've been doing it already is just how much effort it goes in to make a film and even a film like this happen. I think this film was quite a long time in, in the making and even, you know, uh, I mean, it started, I think, with uh, film four, you know, and um, even having someone like The Rock on board doesn't yeah. sort of, you know, guarantee it being made, but I think it made a massive difference, <laughs> ever so slightly. And then they got me and Flo. And what about you? Um, I I'm not so far. I'm not heading on to anything, but I have a couple of things coming out. Um, uh, Ari Aster, who directed Hereditary last year, uh, has done his second film, Midsommar, which is hoping to come out in summer. Um, and Greta Gerwig's Little Women. So I'm I'm 
fully keeping my schedule free to be able to be there for those films because I really... Well, well, we look forward to seeing you guys in the future and best of luck with the movie. Sadly, that's all we've got time from, Bill, but thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for joining us today. Fighting With My Family is in cinemas tomorrow, so go and watch it. It's absolutely hilarious. We'll be back at 4pm with the director uh, of The Hole in the Ground, Lee Cronin, and actress Shauna Kersley. Right now, though, give it up for the cast of Fighting With My Family, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Cheers. Ooh.